Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial on Katia B5. Today we'll be following on from the previous video on uh, the very basics of Katia and today we'll be going through the sketch workbench. So what we'll be doing today is creating a brand new part uh, and creating an A-frame, something you might find on the back of a, uh, of a wing. But we're going to be quite simple uh, and we're going to go through the functions of the sketch workbench. Okay, so first things first, let's create a new part. So we go to File, New, uh, and then scroll down to uh, to Part. And that'll bring up this dialog box here. What you can also do, which is the way I like to do it, is go to Start, Mechanical Design, Part Design. Really is up to you. So we'll give the part a name, which is usually quite important because it helps you keep track of things. Uh, you can ignore these for a, for a while because you'll get uh, more, more acquainted with them in the future. So click OK. And here's our new part. So top left, you can see the design tree. It's currently blank um, because there's nothing in it yet. You've got the name, and we've got an axis system. Now, I have an axis system on mine. You may not have one on yours, but uh, it's generally a better way to work because it's. I think it's a bit easier. If you wish to hold to uh, have it like this, all you need to do is go to Tools, Options, Part Infrastructure in the tree, uh, go to Part Document, and then click an icon saying uh, Create an axis system when creating the part. Okay, so here's our environment. So uh, on your right is your toolbars for the part design. Um, we can most of them blanked out because there's nothing to actually kind of use at the moment. So this is the sketch workbench and uh, workbench here. So we click that. You see in the bottom left, whenever I click a button, uh, we get a an instruction. So select like the plane, a planar face, or a sketch. So in this case, there's nothing here. I'm going to select this plane right here. And there we go. We have now a sickness to a normal view of that plane. We've got all these new toolbars here. Um, when you load it up, usually it's in this configuration where it's got snap to point and grid. I prefer to take those off, but it really is up to you. So what we're going to be doing um, is be using these profile bits here. These are the essentially what you can make anything out of uh, in the entire world. So we've got profile, um, which is a way of creating several bits at the same time. You just drag and drop. You can create circles and everything else. That's a, that's a really, really useful uh, tool. We've got rectangles, circles. Uh, each of these have more specific bits on each one, which allow you to make uh, different shapes. Uh, these are very, very specific. So this one's like the hexagon is generally when you're making a bolt, for example. You've got circles. There's different ways to make a circle. Again, usually very specific. Splines, which is uh, essentially a line, which has got several points, and it allows you to uh, it, they have tangent through each of those points and allows you to make very, very crazy shapes. You've got ovals, lines, and axes. Again, as these are all the same. You can you can have a play with them and find out what they are. So first things first, we'll create an A-frame then. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create it uh, so it's um, basically through the middle. And when I'm going to do this, select my line. Every time you can see these blue bits here, as I'm as I'm going through, uh, these blue lines are saying I'm lining up with a particular axis. And here, as you can see down the bottom, I've got zero zero. That's where I want to start. So I'm going to make a line from here to here. You click to start, click to end. You can see it's blue, which means it's aligned with the horizontal axis, and it's gone green. And that green bit there means I cannot move it from the horizontal, but I can move the length. That isn't actually uh, constrained. So create another line, going straight up, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle on the top. So I align it with the, the center to make sure it's there. That Now you see what I can do is I can make sure that it's, it's connected with this point here. And that's what I'm going to do. You see it's got a coincidence point there. Now I don't really want that. That's not that's not great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase some of it. But before I erase some of it, I am going to uh, make sure it's constrained in the right way. So I know it's constrained like this. It's constrained on on the vertical axis. I know it's constrained at that point there. But I don't want it like that. I want it tangent. So the way I do that is I select that, select that by holding Control, click the Constraints dialog box, and I'll open this box here, uh, and I want tangency. So now it's tangent with it, so it's going to go straight over into that curve. Marvellous. 
And I'm also what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an axis because what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this around over this axis here at the end of it. And to correctly remove some of the stuff, I need to create an axis for that. So there's two ways you can do it really. You can either choose the axis one or you can choose a line and create it into, um, into construction elements. So I'm going to create a line in this case. So I'm going to align it with the vertical axis. Just drag it down, arbitrary amount. Now, if that at the moment that is a, a part of the sketch, that is that would if I come out of the sketch work, but workbench, that'll be a part of it. But I don't want that to be a part of it, so I'm going to click it, click construction element, and that basically gets rid of it as a uh, as a, an element or an entity within the sketch, and it creates it as just basically something to reference off of. This is very useful, for example, in this case. So. Now that I've got these two bits here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of half this circle here. So if I go over to the operations box, go down to mirror, or not mirror, sorry, the uh, trim, you've got quick trim. Now, if you double click something, it'll keep happening until you're happy with it. So double click, click that there. And what it will do is it will raise this part here because it's it will hit, it will hit this entity here and that'll be it. So it raises that part there. You see it's always still highlighted because I double clicked in it. And then I'm going to click this part here. Now, you'll see there's already this little kind of line around it, but that's fine, that's just showing you there's a circle there. So now we've got half of an A-frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to constrain the rest of it. Uh, and by constrain, I mean basically give it some dimensions. So by using the constraint box, I can click on any entity I like, so I can give this a radius. If you're using a radius, if you right click, you can change it to a diameter. You can also choose it to be a reference, which basically means that it doesn't control anything. It's just there to tell you how big it is. So when I'm choosing uh, to put down a constraint, this controls the dimension or the, in this case, the radius of that. So I'm going to change that to 50 and that makes it bigger. Now I'm also going to constrain the height of it. But instead of constraining this height here, I'm going to constrain this height here, which is the center of that radius. Constrain it to the horizontal. And I'm going to make that 100. Just gets a nice round number. And this part here, as you can see, everything that's white means I can still actually move about. So I can still move this, and this will move in uh, respect to its constraints. So it's constrained fully, I can't I can't make it bigger, I can't move it up and down, but it will move around like that because it's allowed to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain this. So I'm going to constrain it by a length, so I'm going to click that point there, to the horizontal. Nice round number, 150. Easy peasy. So that's half of our, our structure done now. If I was to come out of the uh, the workbench, by pressing this button here, it's half. And that I mean I can't do much of that because it's it's not closed. So what I, if I want to go back in, you go to the tree, or you can just double click it, and you go back in. So to create the other half of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror it. And in the operations toolbar, you can see here, you've got mirror. You've also got a few others, such as symmetry. Symmetry does exactly the same as mirror, only it gets rid of the other half. Um, you've got translate, rotate, and scale. These are not normally used as much uh, because it's better to always create the sketch in the right place rather than translate it. Uh, and you've also got offset, which is it's is very useful actually. Uh, what offset does it allows you to create anything you've made and just offset it by a certain amount. That's what you have to do. And it's it's quite a a useful tool, um, especially when it comes to designing things like wing boxes. Um, in, in wings on aircraft. So what we're going to do then is we select uh, what we want to mirror first. So I'm going to select these things here. You can either drag a thing around them or you can select them individually. You click the mirror and you select, as you say it's down here, select the line or axis in which the elements will remain equidistant. So I'm going to select this one here and bam, there we go. It's created what looks like essentially a pyramid. Now, anytime if you want to change this, if you want to change that, for example, you can just go straight back to it and go, okay, I want it bigger, or okay, I want it smaller. 
but uh, it allows you to have good control over your sketches. So I'm actually going to change this to maybe that. So that looks a bit better to me. So to make sure that your sketch is right, everything is green now, which is good. I want you want everything to be green. You don't want to have a sketch which is white and just shows that it's it's been uh, it's not constrained enough. But if you just to make sure, you can always choose this thing here, which is a set sketch solving. Oh, so I can see it's under constrained. And where is it under constrained? Ah, here it is. These two points here. Now, because obviously that's a construction element, that doesn't matter because it doesn't actually uh, affect the uh, the outcome of this. But if it was actually a normal line, then yeah, that would be a problem. What I will say very quickly now is if you were in a case where, for example, you're constraining stuff and I do, let's say I do, uh, I just click on that. You notice it goes purple. And the reason it goes purple is because it means it's over constrained. So purple is over constrained. You can see if I click the uh, solving status, it says it's over constrained. And that's because it's already been defined by something else. Now, when it goes purple, it's not always so clear that uh, if it's over constrained or not. But if it's purple, that means it is. It just means you need to kind of find out why it is and where else you can do it. So this is kind of done now. There are these operations here which allow you to fillet and corner and chamfer, but these are generally, I, I generally recommend you do these in the 3D environment rather than the 2D, as they're much easier to control then. So we'll pop out, and that's our sketch. So you can see that our origin is in the center of this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick pad. So if I correct the pad and click this, very, very simply, 20 millimeters, OK there we've got our solid you notice all these have lit, up, lit up now because it allows us to to use them so when you are actually doing sketches you'll notice I chose a plane you can also choose a surface on a solid you can also choose uh, well, anything really on, on, with on a solid that will allow you to if you click on a uh, sketch and click on something that lights up you can use it essentially okay so before we finish uh, I'm just gonna go through the position sketch um, so positioning a sketch, what you can do is, like it says really, position a sketch uh, independent from, for example, the origin of the part. And this is, be, this is quite useful if um, something you want to reference independently, like a point or a, uh, a feature of a part which you want to reference to. So if I click it, it will open this dialog box here. Um, so say we've got three, three options, which is sketch positioning, origin and orientation so pretty self-explanatory so when we're doing this let's say we want to uh, create a sketch plane which is at the origin is the center of this part here this radius but it uh, let's see it is at an, at an angle so for example if I choose this pad here so I choose that face you'll see it's already selected uh, right where that is but offset uh, implicit means anywhere, but you've got loads of different uh, options here. So part origin will be at the part origin. You've got a projection point, so you can choose um, any point that you want, say that one there, and it'll pop it there. This is where the origin is, so where the center point is. Uh, you've got a middle point on a line, so that'll put it there. And then you've also got uh, like intersection of curve, which will do either two intersections of a curve, or it will do, for example, the center point. Uh, the orientation, again, we've got several different uh, things we can do. We can't choose the x-axis. What it says here is it's, it'll speak, you'll get used to these kind of uh, these errors coming up and not knowing what they're going to say. But what this is essentially is saying is that because we've selected a f uh, an axis which is normal to the sketch, which is that way, and we're going to choose z and y, you can't orientate it that way because it's, it's not even in that uh, dimension. We can choose Y and we can choose Z, however. Now you can choose things like uh, through point, so you can select either the H or the V direction going through a particular point and it will make sure it orientates it so it goes through it. Uh, or you can have it normal to a surface again, so you can have it, if you click this one here, it will make sure it's normal to that surface. So we're going to keep that for now. If you change these two here, it will choose either the V or the H direction or horizontal or vertical axis to align it with. After you're done, you can always choose to reverse 
uh, either of the axes and swap them anyway. Press OK and there we are. It's orientated it to exactly how we wanted it and we can then sketch uh, however, mu however much we want and it will create exactly what we wanted. OK, well, uh, I hope this uh, tutorial has given you a bit of an insight into the sketching function. That's not the be-all and end-all, obviously. There's uh, many more things we can do, but there's so much you can do, it's impossible to put it all in one tutorial without you falling to sleep. So if you do have any questions or queries just uh, or comments, just leave them down below and I'll try and get back to you. Um, our next tutorial will be going through more of the 3D modelling. We'll also be touching back on the sketching here and there and we'll be continuing our A-frame. So please do tune in for that, and thanks very much for watching. Cheerio.